Xpeng, Xiaopeng, Xpeng, whatever you call them, they've unveiled the new G6 eRev. The new G6 is coming very, very soon to Australia. It's coming to many markets as well outside of Australia. And I'm actually really keen to get my hands on it in Australia after we've seen what it's like for Australia. I'll provide you guys with a review and a comparison versus my car, which is the existing G6. But this is um, the E-Rev version. It's based on the G6. It's basically the same car that they've modified to be an E-Rev. And I think it's pretty good. There's also a P7 Plus that they've made an E-Rev of as well. They've also done an E-Rev of the, the X9, which I saw in China in person, which is actually really, really well done. So what are the details? Well, here are the specs and the details of the G6 E-Rev. And I'll mention the P7 E-Rev specs as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And yeah, I've just returned um, from China this week. Saw some of these cars in person, which is quite interesting. The G6 E-Rev gets a 56 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery, 325 kilometers of range. So it's a lot more range than the plug-in hybrids currently on the market. What does this mean? Well, According to the filing from the Chinese government, it uses a 1.5 litre turbocharged internal combustion range extender engine, the same engine they're using in basically all the other models of E-Revs for all the other cars. It puts out 110 kilowatt and all it does, it does not power the wheels. It only turns on when it needs to, to recharge the battery. So that's its sole purpose. There's also a motor at the back which provides 218 kilowatt the electric motor of course now interesting timing here guys because sales from china for e-revs and plug-in hybrids over the last four months have been quite disappointing if you're in this segment if you're selling cars in this segment anyway and they've been going down so for the last four months sales of new energy vehicles that are not evs have been falling month after month after month for four months in a row ev sales have continued to rise Manufacturers had no idea this was going to happen, but I think customers are more and more thinking, well, I don't need to buy a hybrid. So it's going to be interesting to see how these new E-Revs go. I think they could sell okay because they've got much better specs than plug-in hybrids from companies like BYD, for example. Anyway, the E-Rev, it's the same size as the G6. Top speed is 202 kilometers an hour. Charging speed is around 350 kilowatt. So very, very good charging speed. Like I said, EV range is 325 kilometers. There may be a longer range version of this though. I've heard that there will be a 420 kilometer range version as well, but I don't know the specs on that yet exactly. And that may not be the case. Anyway, combined total range is said to be 1400 kilometers. So that's a lot of range, yeah? You'd expect that, you know, having a 56 kilowatt hour battery, which is not, not far off the actual size of the battery in the fully electric version, that you'd get quite a lot of range. So I think real world EV range might be approximately 250 kilometers, real world. So that's more than you're gonna need for, I'd, I'm gonna guess for most people, 99% of trips that you do. But if you wanna stop and charge it, you don't have to wait for a lot of these ridiculous plug-in hybrids with 30 to 40, 50 kilowatt charging speeds. Like I said, charging speed, 350 kilowatts, so very, very fast. Pricing. Well, apparently the pricing is meant to be estimated for the entry variant at $24,800 US dollars. That's in China, of course. So those are all the details we have so far for the G6. Looking at the P7 Plus, which is considered to be basically Xpeng's smart car. It uses multiple smart chips to have the most computing power of any car I believe there's currently on the market. Anyway, the P7 Plus E-Rev gets the same range, 325 kilometers of range, but the battery is a little smaller. It's a 49 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. Same motor, it's got the same 110 kilowatt, 148 horsepower, 1.5 liter turbocharged motor. Also doesn't power the wheels, it powers, it only recharges the battery. And the electric motor on this vehicle is a little smaller. It's got 180 kilowatt or 241 horsepower. Top speed is 200 kilometers an hour. Now, apparently, it's a little longer, this version, than the standard non-E-Rev version by 15 millimeters. So that's 1.5 centimeters. I don't think you'd be able to tell the looks. I think it'd be impossible to do so. But that's the size of the car. It's a fairly big car, these vehicles. They're, you know, nearly 5.1 meters long. Massive interior space, too, particularly because it's a coupe shape and a liftback. You can fit it like bikes in the back of these cars, which is surprising to me when i first saw this car in real life i went and had a look at it and i opened the boot and i was like 
wow, this is massive. You could, there's so much space in these cars. So, you know, if you're going to buy an electric sedan, I'd say don't buy one of these instead because they look like a sedan, but they're much more practical. My solar and batteries. I've got a 50 kilowatt hour battery here and I've got a big solar array. So I pay $0 for electricity. That's including charging my electric car. Resync Solar is the company that I used. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Anyhow, apparently there's a badge on the back that says P7 Plus Power Ultra. It's going to call it the Power Ultra, I believe. And I should mention, guys, as well, that both of these models, the G6 E-Rev and also the X9 E-Rev and the P7 Plus E-Rev, they all use an 800 volt high voltage silicon carbide platform. So yeah, much more advanced than the 400 volt versions on offer. Plus, like I said, much, much faster charging speed. So charging times have got to be around 15 minutes to charge these batteries from 10 to 80%, not the ridiculous 30 to 80% the manufacturers are quoting these days. 10 to 80% is going to give you about 15 minutes to charge it. If you can find a charger that can charge it that fast. There's a few of them out there, 350 kilowatt now. They're getting more and more common. Personally, I not that interested in e-rev version i much prefer the electric version i just think it's got more than enough range for my needs the current ev that i've got the g6 has 570 kilometers of, of range when i've never found that i've really needed any more than that but there might be some people that might be interested in this you know i think when this comes to the g9 there might be a few people that want to do want to tow you know tow caravans or rvs and they might find this could be a good option for them what do you guys think of this? How do you think this compares to the EV version? Would you consider one of these? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.